All right. Well, my name is Scott Thorpe, and I'm from the law firm of Kunzler IP. And today I'm going to be talking about patents. Now, basically, what a patent is, is a deal between you and the rest of the society. You agree to disclose your invention, tell all about it, and in exchange for that disclosure, you get 20 years of exclusive use of that invention. Now, what that means by exclusive use is you can keep anyone else from practicing that invention. If someone else tries to practice your invention, you can stop them. That does not, however, give you the right to practice that invention. If someone else has intellectual property that might prevent you from using your own patent, they can and may stop you from practicing your patent. So a patent is 20 years of exclusive use, the right to exclude, not the right to use. Now, a patent basically is a document that the government grants you the ownership of what's called claims. Claims is a written description of exactly what you have owned or what you have patented with your patent application. Claims are highly legalistic, uh, very difficult to understand. Uh, unless you've written lots and lots of patent applications, they're, they almost seem impenetrable, and most people shouldn't try to write them. On the other hand, a written description, which is also a part of your patent application, is uh, most people would find that uh, very understandable, very easy to use. It's basically a description of what the invention is. And you can go into all the many aspects of it, uh, how you put it together, how you practice it, uh, what some of the limitations are, what, uh, what some of the various embodiments that that patent application include. Most people, when they read a patent application, go to the description because they find the patent claim. So, impenetrable, but when it comes down to it, what you really, really own with your patent application is the claims. Now, when you look at a patent application, the description basically has two parts. One is the, the drawings. For historical reasons, in that patent applications originally were machines and, and drawings were therefore very important, drawings are key to a good patent application. And so every patent application needs drawings, even if you're patenting a business process, even if you're patenting software, drawings are key. So whenever you're creating a, a patent application, most people start with good drawings, and then they go ahead and describe those drawings. And that is the way that patent applications are put together. Now, there are a couple of ways that you can get really tripped up in protecting your intellectual property with a patent. And the number one way is this concept of a bar date. A bar date is the date after which you cannot patent your invention. You're, you're absolutely barred from even applying. And this date starts when you disclose, publicly disclose, or sell your invention. So for example, if I came up with a great idea and I published it in a scholarly journal, the day that that was published would start the clock running for a bar date. Now in the United States, we're fortunate in that you have a very long grace period after that, after that uh, clock starts ticking. In the US, you have a year. In Japan, you have six months. But in most of the rest of the world, as soon as you disclose, or as soon as you begin selling your invention, you are barred from filing for a patent application. Because of the one year grace period in the United States, this trips a lot of people up. They think that that's going to be true in the rest of the world. It's not. Unless you have filed a patent application somewhere that protects your invention, and that can be relied on to claim priority in the rest of the world, you may be out of luck for countries like Germany and China and France, and that is a big problem. So the way to get around this bar date is before you disclose your invention, before you begin to sell it, you need to have a patent application filed. 
One of the most popular ways of doing that is something called a provisional patent application. Now, a provisional patent application doesn't give you anything except a placeholder. It allows you to file a regular patent application, what we call a non-provisional or utility patent application, in the future based on the information that you disclosed in that provisional patent application. If you think about a regular patent application as the Abrams tank of the intellectual property world, something big and muscly and expensive, but that you can go out and enforce your, your uh, intellectual property, you can sue people, uh, you can license it. A provisional patent, all it does is give you the right to, within one year, file a regular patent application. But because of that right, it is extremely important. If you file a provisional application, you can go ahead and file a U.S. patent application within a year, but you can also file international applications that depend from that provisional patent. And there's a couple that you need to know about. One of them is what's called the Patent Cooperation Treaty, or PCT filing. A PCT patent application is a wonderful device that lets you file a patent application in some country today, and usually we file in the United States, we also file in Korea, and we also file in a number, a number of other countries. And with that filing, in the future, months in the future, you can designate that you want that application to go to these other countries and be filed there as well. It's a wonderful device because you file now and start to pay later, and start to pay for the prosecution and examination of that patent much later. So it gives you a way to protect your intellectual property overseas, but spend very little money today. Now, a provisional patent application can be converted into a, into a PCT filing, which is very important, because by filing a provisional patent application, you can protect your intellectual property all over the world. You can also file a PCT from a U.S. application, and you can also use the provisional and the U.S. application in order to file in other countries that aren't part of the, the patent cooperation treaty, such as Taiwan. They're probably the most important one. But the most important thing about intellectual property is you need to remember this bar date, because as soon as you go past the deadline in a country, you're out of luck. You can't file, you can't protect your invention. You've basically given it away. Patents are a wonderful thing. Uh, without a patent, there's very little incentive to innovate. Instead, in countries that have weak intellectual property laws, people almost always copy instead of innovate. So it's a strong encouragement for innovation.